Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and what you're about to see is a behind the scenes look at a tour that I did with Matis Yahoo where I spent four days on the road with him with all access to capture really whatever I wanted, anything I wanted to capture, I could capture. So the images you're about to see, I've never shown them to anyone outside of the band or the band's management and I thought it was time to release them. So what I'm gonna do is go through the images that I took, stop on some of them, tell you how they were created to give you more information. So if you'd like to try to capture images like this, you can try just as well because you can see the settings and get some of the mentality through that I was shooting with. Uh, so let's turn to the computer and before we jump into these images, if you'd like to sign up for my email list, you can do so. Put your name, email address in here, hit send it, and what you're gonna get back in your email is a guide to capturing motion in low light situations. It's a free guide, it's a free ebook, so check that out and go from there. So let's get into these images. So as we can see here on the screen, through the four day tour, I only took, what did I take? 1,088 uh, pictures. 408, 147, 296, and 237. So what does that mean? That means I did not motor drive through my photos. I don't motor drive. That's just how it is and I'm a very selective shooter. Just because you have the ability to shoot a lot of pictures doesn't mean that you should. Wait for that moment, try to capture that moment. If you need to spray and pray or motor drive at a certain situation, there are times where that's called for but many times it's not really called for. So anticipate the action and then capture it. So we're gonna go through a bunch of these I'm gonna put it on to the develop module so that you could see the settings. Uh, and also, you'll see this down in the bottom corner. I edited these images before Lightroom 4 came out, so I have to go back and redo it. So basically, I flew into South Carolina. Was it South Carolina? I think it was South, yeah, SC, South Carolina. I moved into South, flew into South Carolina, met the tour there, picked it up for four days, dropped me off at the end in Atlantic City where my dad picked me up and I went home. Uh, a four day tour is perfect. Anything more than that starts to get overkill because the road, though you may think it's a lot of fun, which it is fun at times, there's a lot of downtime, which becomes pretty boring. So here we go. We're on the street, just walking by, meeting fans, and that's cool when you do stuff like that. I'm just trying to capture stuff with the 24 to 70 to tell the story because everything that I'm capturing on this tour is about the story. Sure, there's one or there's a couple of images, a handful of images that can stand out on their own, which is what you 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 do want images that stand out on their own, but I'm all about telling a story with more images. Uh, so I picked 204 of 100 of 1,088 and some extra that you can't see because I'm not showing them. Um, so we've got Montes has his kids on the road, two little guys. I think they were like five or six, six and eight or I don't know, something like that, young kids. And they would run around. They'd be out there on the road. So here they are just walking around. Not Well, the, the one guy's not the kid. He's not the kid. Stu's the bass player in the band. Um, all right, so Matis is walking with his kid and walking with the guys from the tour. I'm sure you guys want to know, how am I doing this? How am I capturing? Uh, am I in aperture priority or am I in manual? I am in manual 100% of the time. Out here on the road, manual 100% of the time. I figure out my settings and I go from there. And that reminds me, if you're looking to try to do what I'm doing, uh, you want to get out of auto, check out the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide to getting out of auto. It's a three hour long video that is really meant to help you learn what I am doing here. So the stuff that I'm doing here, you're gonna learn from my video guide, the basics of photography, so enough with that. Matis walking with his kids manually, uh, doing it, I'm shot it at 2.8, 1,000 ISO, 1 640th of a second at 2.8, using the 70 to 200, 2.8 VR2. I wanna isolate the subjects from the background. I like that we have the tour bus here on the left-hand side. I love that the tour bus is there, and I love that he's holding hands with his son, and we got the other crew members here walking as well. So another technique you could do is you don't have to shoot wide open all the time. When you, ex when you zoom out to say, 200 millimeters, even with a 55 to 200, a, a 5.6 lens, you can still blow out the background because the further you zoom out, you're compressing the image more. Uh, for something like this, you could shoot at 3, 2, 3, 5 and still get away with a nice blurry background. 
bokeh, nice bokeh. So we, we keep walking, you run into fans. I think it's important to capture this type of stuff. I need to re-edit these because I want them to boomify more. Then his other son came out uh, and they were both walking, taking a walk, everybody left him alone. I love shots like this. You've got both sons here holding hands with their dad. I don't mind the slight vignetting that you're getting from the lens. Uh, 500th of a second. Uh, autofocus was on continuous. The reason it's on continuous is because they're because they are walking, and I want to continuously focus. If it was in single, I wouldn't have gotten them in focus. Then one of the kids starts to turn around and look at me. Boom! There you go. I'm sure you're wondering how do I decide black and white or color? It's a feel thing. Whatever feels right to me is what I'm going to process and edit in. So if it feels like color works for one, that's what I'm going with. And then if I want to grab the emotion, I may just go to black and white. I am a black and white shooter. I like to boomify it. So then they saw this, uh, this water fountain and, and wanted to go for a swim. Yep. He's like, can we go swimming? All right, let's go swimming. Anyway, they went back to the bus to get into their... Uh, to get his brother or whatever they were doing to go back. So he's just climbing on top of his dad as his dad's texting and uh, he's trying to touch the ceiling. And I'm just here capturing everything. You know, Mata says, capture whatever you want. And that is all you could ever ask for. So they're walking over to the fountain to go take a swim. They're running through it. Uh, I bump up to 2000 ISO now because the light is pretty low. I still want a fast shutter speed to freeze the kids as they're running around. That's why I'm at 1 3 20th of a second. 24 to 70 to 8. My go-to lens is a, is a 70 to 200 2.8. But these are the shots I want to get. They found a little, they had a little toy with them. Um, so they're just playing around. I'm telling the story here, running through the fountain. That's what he was doing. Not the easiest thing to capture, especially with the autofocus getting thrown off by the water, because um, the water will throw that off. So he's just waiting. Nice, solid shots to me. Playing, it's cold. Still doing the continuous focus. This is Matis. This is before he cut off his beard. Um, now, a lot of the shots that you're seeing that you that that I love getting on the road are shots that most people would never get. The access that other people don't have that I ask for or get the um, the access. They give me the access because they're comfortable with me. They're comfortable with the work that I've shown because first you lead off with the quality work that you have, and then they give you access based off of that. And if they like you. If you get along, if you're out of the way and you just capture, uh, that's what I'm doing. I want to tell the story of not just the band, but everything else that's going on around them. Nice portrait on there. This is one of my favorites from the tour. It's the kids with their dad on the park bench. A beautiful black and white shot with a 70 to 200. Just a really, really, one of, the, one of my favorite shots from the tour. All right, so we're just going to keep skipping through this. Um, these guys were driving around, it was a college town, asked if we wanted a ride. I jumped in one, Montes and the kids jumped in the other, and they, uh, they went around. And I took pictures. I had the fish eye on, and I was just driving, and uh, they were waving and, and just capturing other things. So then it was time to mix some juice. Just, I'm just telling the story of what's going on. Now look at this. All right, they're stirring up the, the juice, they're juicing, and obviously you can see what he thinks about that. I don't think he likes it too much in his Wally glass. Look at that. So the kids are on the tour, they sleep on the bus, they run around, they play with their toys, they get in fights, they punch you, but they're really, really, really good kids, you know. Montes is, is the dad on the road, and he's, telling, and he's taking care of the kids, and he's working uh, as a musician. I love stuff like this. The lines are a little off, yes. Yes, the lines are slightly off, I don't know why, but it's with the 14 and 24, and it's not in terribly straight, my fault. Now we're moving into the show. Um, we've got Shannon here setting up for the show. These are cool shots from the stage. Each venue is going to be different. You have to try different light, different situations. Uh, are going to call for different settings, and every show has a different set of lights, which means you have to figure out how to get your settings right. That's why it's important to know the very basics, the exposure triangle, the same things that I teach in the beginner's guide. Fronosphoto.com/guide to pick that up, three hours of cool video. Just love telling the story, boom. Now we've got, I mean, look at these lights in the background. Just, I love how they're, 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 they're raining down here. Um, 
that's what makes a really thick, cool image. And exposing myself, exposing myself, I said, uh, one one hundredth of a second at 3.2, 4,000 ISO. I'm at a hundredth of a second because there's not much of an action going on. So I don't need to freeze too much. And I also don't want to bump the ISO terribly too high, but with, what was I shooting with, the D3S at the time? Yeah, D3S at the time. I like shooting at 4,000. That was my go-to ISO with this camera. And a lot of the cameras that are out there now, I'll say this, a lot of the cameras that are out there now from the D600 to the uh, D7000 to the Canon 6D are allowing you to shoot at these areas. But high ISO is not a replacement for uh, good glass. You still need quality glass because it brings down your ISO when you let in more light, which gives you better quality images, better sharpness, better color, better tone. Moving forward. I'm just trying to tell the story of everything that goes on on the stage. You never know where these images could be used. Could this be used as a, as a record cover, cover, an album cover? You never know. Um, Shannon's setting up. I just got to blow through these quicker, don't I? All right. I'm going to, okay. You can see all the settings. I'm going to leave them there so you can see it. Uh, before the show starts, waiting for Matis, I'm using this doorway as a natural frame. Yep. A natural frame, guys. You can see this as a form of composition. I'm metering for the guy outside under that light because that is what I want to read. So Matis is walking in with his son. They stop to have a smoke. Boom. 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 You can see all of these images. I've uploaded them. Phronosphoto.com. Uh, click the link below. You can see all of these images. Uh, I'll probably post them to Flickr. Not sure if they're at full, full res, but at least 2,000 pixels so that you can take a look. The kids are sitting side stage. This is one of my favorite shots from the show. I want to see how much time we have here. We've been recording for 11 minutes already. I got to speed up because uh, we only got 20 total. Um, the kids are just sitting there watching the show. But actually, they're not watching the show. They're playing games on their iPhones. Uh, they don't have iPhones, but on the crew's iPhones, as their dad is playing. They have their headphones on so that they, uh, they have their earplugs in because it's loud and you want to wear earplugs at every concert. So... I metered for the kids. Oh, wow, a 40th of a second. Why was I at a 40th of a second? Because they were sitting in almost no light. Um, and I knew that I had to slow the shutter speed down to compensate for the fact that they're not sitting in the light. But because they're not moving, I don't have to worry about freezing the motion. So a 40th of a second at 2.8, 4,000 ISO at the 14 millimeter gave me the sharpest tack sharp image that I wanted right here of the kids. So. I jump out on the stage during the show. I can do that. He lets me do that because I want to get shots like this. Fish eye, very limiting uh, lens. Use it sparingly. Um, but I know that I can get really cool shots that other people aren't going to get from the stage. Not always side stage like this. Every show, Matis goes into a jump. Boom, 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 boom. This is a time to motor drive, in my opinion. Continuous focus. I went to 1 500th of a second. I bumped my ISO to 8,000. Why did I bump it to 8,000? Because I knew he was going to jump, and I wanted to try to freeze the motion. Plus, as he jumps out into the, into the crowd, there may not be as much light out there unless the, the lighting guy turns that on. So... I went to 3.2 to try to give me some range. If my focus misses a little bit, it expands it. 500th of a second, 8,000 ISO, and I'm following him as he jumps. Um, as he goes through the crowd, I selected the lens that I had on. It was the 14 to 24 because I knew I wanted to get a wide shot of him jumping, but it also gives me the ability to zoom out, step to the front of the stage because I'm not in the way. Nobody cares. They're not looking at me. They're looking at Matis. Everybody's turned around. There he is in the crowd coming back to the front of the stage. Boom. Let's go through this. Let's get to the end of the show. Now we're backstage at, oh, forget it. Uh, I forgot to do this. On the stage, everybody comes up for the last song. I had them look at me. I took a picture. That's a cool thing. Uh, after the show, just relaxing, the kids decide they want to throw some stuff into the, uh, the, the crowd, except nobody's there, so Matis has to talk to them right here. Please stop throwing stuff in there. I said, please don't do that, so you get all of this stuff. Now, these are the pictures that I have not shown to anybody before. These are never before seen to the public. I think they're okay to show because it's Matis in the hotel room with his kids watching TV before bed. Um, I went back there with them, uh, and Matis is there with the kids. They're watching TV. They're having family time. To have this access is what it's all about. So I'm just capturing these shots as they're waiting, uh, as, they're, as they're ignoring me. Just capturing, telling the story. 
telling more of a story. And then Matis goes out for a minute. Right after this picture, they go, stop taking pictures. Stop looking at us. But that's okay, because I got the picture. So the next morning, in the next place we drove to a, uh, we were going to be on TV. So I'm getting all the setup for TV. It's early morning. Now we're in North Carolina. The touring life. You wake up in a new city, and whatever. Yeah, you wake up in new places all the time, and... Uh, and that's what you got. You, you never know where you're going to end up. Well, you kind of know where you're going to end up. But we've got Matis getting ready for the show. Sh shots like this is what it's all about to me. Telling the story of where you are. We are at a TV station. Here are the TVs, uh, the cameras, and Matis is waiting to play for live, uh, live on air. And to me, these are what the shots are all about. I'm going to take a quick pause to... I'm going to pause to restart the camera because this is going to continue to go on a little longer. All right, let's jump back into this. Just wanted to make sure the camera didn't stop recording after 20 minutes so that we can keep talking here for another longer bit of period, a uh, bit of time. So I love stuff like this. I mean, just getting shots like this behind the scenes is what it's all about to me. And then discovering the images that are there and capturing them and knowing your exposures and figuring out lighting and getting it right is what it's all about. As you get more comfortable as a photographer, you're going to start to understand your lighting situations. You walk into a room, you're going to guess your settings. And that is a great place to start. And knowing your exposure triangle, which is something we spend a ton of time in, a ton of time with in the beginner guide, which is on DVD and you can download it. Um, we really hammer home the importance of knowing the basics. Once you understand the basics, you can shoot anything, anywhere, because you're comfortable with your settings. It doesn't matter if you have the greatest camera in the world or the lowest end camera in the world. You should be able to capture images with anything because it's about composition and understanding what you're doing. So keep moving forward here. Just still looking for images that are going on, looking for things that tell the story of this tour. This is the live shot. And then that's the shot that's waiting. And you can see that you got the cameras, the personalities, the cook, wait, the chef waiting to do something over here. And you've got them playing there live on air. Moving forward, what, what, am, I, what am I saying? It's one two hundredth of a second, only 2,000 ISO. They're under stage lights. They are under stage lights. They're on studio lights because they're on set to go uh, on TV. So you know the lighting's gonna be pretty good. The reason I go to higher ISOs is to give me a faster shutter speed because I think it's more important to freeze the action and have tack sharp images at a higher, slightly higher ISO than to worry about having a blurred image at a 50th, a 60th of a second and have a lower ISO. I wanna have frozen sharp images. All right, so I beat this to death captured all this guy <laughs> you know this guy on stage he's like your uh he's like your uh, ron burgundy type guy he's like oh you guys are amazing you know ron burgundy then we got shannon setting up the guitar adding new strings really low light situation here uh but i was at a 3200th th of a second 3.2 100th of a second trying to meet her off of him trying to figure it out with this one really strong spotlight this show where are we now north carolina wasn't going to have good lighting. I knew that already. But here we got um, Kaplinsky, sound guy setting up the sound. He ended up asking for this shot for a magazine. Um, yeah, metering manually, one one hundredth of a second, 3.2, 3200 ISO, 24 millimeters with a 24 to 70. Love this framing, love this composition, love how the light is here on him. And if if we you know weren't reading this properly, we would uh, we just be off. Um, if we were in, a, in aperture priority instead of manual. So before the show, the kids came out or during sound check and they wanted to play the drums. So Mata sat down with them to play the drums. And this set of images is really cool. I'm going to go through this because there's a lot of really nice shots in here. The sta I had the, I had the uh, lighting guy put on the lights because I asked for it. I'm like, hey, please put on the lights uh, so we could do this. So the kids are drumming. Good shots, good shots. Switching angles, 24 to 70. What is the shot? The 34 millimeters. Um, just really nice black and white. Love. See, look, the reason I'm metering myself in manual is because if we didn't, it was read for these really bright cans right here. Um, <laughs> 
They're playing, they're playing, but this is my style of shooting. Here we go. Uh, let me find a different one for that. Yeah, something like this. I am shooting through objects. I am utilizing the things that are out of focus to draw you into the subject. So as a part of a composition, I love the out of focus areas that draw you in like this. Not only is it natural framing, but you're leading yourself right into it. I love these portraits. I love this. His brother sitting here playing, but then I'm shooting through this as a drum kit. It just makes the image so much better. It isolates it and, it, it just, and I'm at 4000 ISO by the way, uh, but isolating the image and capturing what I want. Worst show lighting ever, by the way. So I was stuck to try to come up, I threw a flash on for this and that was it. But really, really, really impossible lighting to shoot with. That's why there's not a lot of live shots. Just because the light, you know, the lighting's terrible doesn't mean I have to shoot. I have a couple of days to get it right. I can focus on different things during a show. Just so happened that these lights were really, really bad. So I didn't shoot just to shoot in the hopes of getting some action shots because I knew I had some great shots the night before. I knew that in a few days we'd be in Atlantic City at the Borgata where the lights would be incredible. So moving forward, moving forward, talking to people after the show, signs autographs, that's what it's all about. <laughs> Stretching, doing some yoga poses, just having fun. Uh, I set up my camera here to do some video of me. I would love to have a remote camera like the D4. I could do this if I had the remote dongle and shoot during the show if it was put there, but I'm not a big fan of doing that. Now we're at the Norva, one of the greatest venues to shoot at, not shoot at, one of the greatest venues to be a band at because they have an amazing apartment style dressing room with a hot tub and showers and, and, and great food. They have great catering there. A big shout out to the owner there. They do a great job. Uh, and yeah, I like going to the Norva. So what I did have at the Norva was a catwalk behind the stage, and then they put out their big banner so I could no longer shoot from back there. So I had to figure out what to do. And you also have to figure out how to get different shots each day, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting different shots during sound check. I'm spending my time, empty venues. Love seeing shots with empty venues. I actually shot Perry Farrell here as well. Um, love that shot. Love how thick the black and whites are. They're going to become even thicker when I edit them with Lightroom 4 uh, raw editing. All of these shots are telling the story. Love stuff like this. I'm not an advocate for smoking, but it makes for interesting images. You've got the smoke. He's playing with the dials. Moving through, moving through, moving through. Wanted to try some different things for the live show from a distance here. Uh, wanted to get the Matis Yahoo in the background. The one thing, the lighting is okay here, but they don't have any... Uh, LED lights or they don't have any straight up lights. They just have cans. They don't have any things that are brighter. Down lights, the, the ones that swivel and rotate. So that's something that I wish they would add there. So I wanted to go from a distance to try to get the stands, sorry, the fans, um, but I also shot from the pit to get some shoe shots, to get some different shots. There's not a lot of stuff to get from the stage. I know this is a low angle. Um, I wanted to get the Matis Yahoo behind him short. His crotch is here, but I don't care. I wanted to go for the lighting, get his hands in there, and shoot. Uh, jump through some of this. This shot I showed you guys before. One of my favorite shots from the tour. Yep, cut his toe off just a little bit, but it's just the way the light is hitting him. One four hundredth of a second, 3.2, 6400 ISO, shooting in manual, surrounded by the Matis Yahoo and all of the band members. That, to me, is a killer live shot to tell a story. Jumping into the crowd from a distance, not the best. Needed more light, needed less haze, and we had it. There we go, everybody up on stage. As you can see, you shoot different things. Okay, so now we're coming near the end. I know this has been a long video. I am sitting where I was sleeping for the tour. Montes invited me back there because that's where the extra bunk was. The kids had, each kid had their own bunk and didn't want to give it up. So I got to sleep in the back of the bus, which is more comfortable anyway, because it's bigger. You're not in a little coffin, uh, sarcophagus of a, uh, of a bunk. So that's where Matis slept, and, in, in, and I literally slept next to him across the way. So now these are shots of him in the morning. He had no problem with me shooting it. His one son, actually, before he crawled into bed with his dad, mistake, m mistook me for him for some reason and jumped on me and I elbowed him. I was sleeping and I was like, uh, and I didn't really realize it. So he jumped in the bed. He slept with his dad, uh, was sleeping with his dad in the morning as we're rolling into Atlantic City. And I asked Matis first if it's okay if I take pictures of him and his son in bed there. And he said, yep. So that's 
even though I was already on tour and I could do whatever, I still asked. Look how they're sleeping. They're sleeping the same way. I just love shots like this. Boom, boom. I took a couple, I took a couple, and then I got out of there. So now we're in the last day of the show for me, or the last stop on the tour for me, and really beautiful lighting at the Borgata, one of the best venues, one of the best lighting ever, so I'm just trying to get Matis here. I love these low angle shots, black and white. Boom, a little bit from an angle, not straight up the middle, which is better. Fisheye, the reason I shot the fisheye here is because the um, I knew that all the lights would look good and the Matis Yahoo in the back would look good as well. There's only so many of these shots you can take, and a little bit of a story is you've seen the best shot that I ever took of Matis Yahoo um, in Philly with all of the spiring lights. It ended up being his tour poster, so you may have seen it and not realize that I was the person who took it. Once you get, get that killer shot, it's hard to replicate, and, it, and you gotta look for other things to shoot. Moving forward, boom. Then I break through to get these wide shots with the 14 millimeter. I prefer that over the fisheye. I just love this stuff. Tells the story, tells the story. We're going to stop right there with the guys that run on stage for the dancing. Turn over to here. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's a long video, but I wanted to brain dump and just give you as much information as I could about this. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you click on the screen right now, you can see the a, a, sunshine. All of the photos cut to the song Sunshine by Matis Yahoo. Um, actually, don't click on the screen yet, so I'm not putting that up there. There's a few things I want to say. At the end of this video, you can click on the screen to take you over to that Sunshine video, uh, or it will launch in a new window. I'll figure that out when I'm done. But to me, it's about being on the road and telling the story. The All of the images together, to me, is more important than one image that you look at and you go, oh, that's a great image. I want to see the whole thing, everything. I want to see the story of the road. That's what I go out to capture is from the beginning to the end and everywhere in between all of the killer moments that are there. So thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to pick up an I Shoot Raw t-shirt, you can do so at store.fronosphoto.com. There's t-shirts, hats, hoodies, uh, and lens cloths, and everything else you can think about. And one last time, if you haven't signed up for the email list, please do that. You're going to get a free ebook to capturing motion in low light situations and the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide really is a great tool if you're looking to get out of auto or if you've been out of auto for a little bit and you're not really sure about your manual settings. It's a three hour video guide uh, that you can purchase and it's helped a ton of people up to this point and you can read their testimonials on the page and uh, you can download it or get it on DVD with free shipping anywhere in the world. So thank you guys for watching. Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click the subscribe button right here below the video as YouTube has made the change. And one more thing, click on subscription updates, manage subscriptions, and if you would like to get an email every time I upload a new video, click this box. If you'd like to see it in your feed on YouTube, click that box. And over on fronosphoto.com, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can go ahead and put your name in this box, your email in this box, hit send it, and I will send you a free photo guide, a guide to capturing motion in low light situations. If you're new to photography or you're somewhere in the intermediate range looking to learn a little bit more about your camera and how to get out of auto, don't forget about the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide, a guide to getting out of auto. It's at a special price right now. It's a three hour long video. You can buy it as an instant download or as a free as a physical copy with free shipping around the world. So thank you guys very much for watching.